In the last part, I visited one of the most majestic Mayan ruins in the entire world in Copanruenas, Honduras. If you have not watched that video, I highly encourage you to click on the top right and check it out first. And now in this part, I will continue exploring this charming town, including finding a parrot in the middle of the road. Oh my god, my car on the road. Being invited to a local Buddhist ceremony. And literally trying to walk across a river. Oh no, oh god, oh it's cold. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. God help me in my, in my, in my wallet. And, and basically I think I have, God. Today is day three in Copanuenas, and I decided to go to the famous Parque de Aves, the bird park. But before that, I had to go hunt down some breakfast because I am starving. Well, they say do what the Romans do. So I came across this little shop that has a lot of locals eating in it. So I decided to come and take a look. And strangely, they call pupusas here in bananas. So I had a chicken and a pork one. And they are so good. Like juicy inside, but outside is crispy. Oh my God, this is the best thing. And I like it so much, I decided to ask for a little bit more. And they apparently have some really weird fillings here as well. One is called, this thing called loroco. Loroco is like, some kind of vegetable they call me but strangely this kind of vegetable costs more than the meat and you can see it right here it just arrived piping hot and i gotta dig into it and let you know if it's good or not so i asked the lady if she can bring me out uh, an original loroco because um the pancake itself tastes really weird okay the loroco itself has a really strong almost seaweed taste and it turns out it looks like this it's a kind of flower that um, is apparently before budding, they will just pick it off and then they will salt it and then make it into this kind of um, empanada. One thing I found really interesting is that Monday everyone's out, out and about doing all kinds of business and there are special businessmen that just carry their goods around. And I don't mean your simple, you know, drinks or food or some simple gadgets. There are people carrying like professional painting around trying to sell them. And then there are people carrying like electrical appliances around trying to sell them as well. And this is really weird, you know. They probably have to walk all around the town and visit every single store in town in order just to sell probably like a converter or something like that. And at the Central Park, I quickly found myself a tuk-tuk eager to take me up to the Burr Mountain. And off we go. And now I'm at Parque de Aves, Macau Mountain they call it. But it looks like it's much more than Macau, so I'm looking forward to it. This park is situated in a large valley and you can hear the water running beneath me. And luckily on this Monday, I'm probably the only visitor, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing all kinds of birds and let them stand on top of me. Or apparently that's no longer the case because due to, you know, the pandemic, it is no longer possible to let birds touch you. But you know, hey, it's a price you have to pay. They say in this cage, they house some of the males that are very aggressive to females because they have got used to the human company and this has resulted in them cannot be reintroduced. So they have to be housed here, such as the one in the back called um, Raul. He has been deemed to be extremely aggressive and violent. He cannot be let out at all. So sadly, you know, 
they probably have to spend the rest of their lives here in this cage. But you know, it's better than being euthanized, right? And well, the sad thing is that actually a lot of these birds, they live for a really, really long time. So these parrots, like the Raul here, probably will stay here for more than 30 years. These are the great green macaws. These are the largest parrots in their range. But these are very, very interesting birds. They live for a long time and they're very smart. You can see this one's climbing. Wow. Yeah, but sadly, they are also very much in great danger. They are very popular as exotic pets. The macaws have been worshipped by all of the ancient Mayans for a long time. And as you can see here, here is a reproduction of a Mayan tablet of what the depiction of Mayan macaw warriors would have been like. Here you can see it's even painted a little bit red as usual for all of the tablets and the monoliths. And here is what I find to be the most adorable, the baby macaws. There's a special breeding program for the macaws here in the Macau Mountain. And of course, they have to display the tiny little babies they have. Oh, they're so cute. And they're just like, look at you with their big googly eyes and just like, please, I want some papaya. Well, if you're like me and find watching birds in cages a little bit boring, don't worry. Macau Mountain has an active release program, and a lot of these birds are at their final stage towards freedom. They are allowed to roam free in the valley during the day, and I was lucky to be surrounded by quite a few of them.
Oh my god, my car on the road. I took the tuk-tuk back to town. However, I was quickly accosted by two curious locals. I'm now back in the town and I'm ready to go for lunch. But I have to introduce you to some new friends I've met in the town. Say hi, hola! Hola! Quién eres? Yo soy Cindy. Yo soy Shanti. Vivimos aquí en Copa Ruinas y nos conocimos a él y es una bonita experiencia. And remember these two girls. You're gonna see them very soon later in this part. After having a hearty lunch for less than $3, I hopped onto a random stranger's pickup truck and headed outside town. Well, what am I doing? Let me explain. For the afternoon, I'm now with Gerardo from Via Via Travels. Say hi. Hi guys, my name is Gerardo Via Via. I'm from Belgium, been living here for 20 years in Copan de Rinas in Honduras. I'm the owner of the hotel, bar, restaurant Via Via and also of the travel agency. So what we're doing today is a social cultural hiking trip. I'm gonna explain a little bit about the good, the bad and the ugly about this area and about Honduras. So welcome. Yeah, Ger Gerardo is very knowledgeable of the area. He's, he's been here longer than, you know, a lot of you have been in the, in the world. So <laughs> I trust him with my life. And today we're gonna explore Hacienda San Lucas and the uh, area around here, just outside Copan Ruinas. Let's go. During the hike, I learned so many little interesting tidbits about Honduras and its past, such as these old abandoned houses used to dry the tobacco leaves that used to fuel the local economy, and a hidden secret Mayan ruin just tucked away in the middle of the mountain. I learned that this is a ritual site for fertility, and no, it's not that kind of fertility you're thinking about. It is about the fertility of the land, and you can see in the drawing here, the balls of the royals are clearly depicted as very engorged and the blood flows from the genital into the ground. So this is a site where the royal bloodline fertilizes the land. And we were even able to touch and decipher some of the old animal statues. And I'll let Gerardo take over from here. So here he is, this is the king toad. You got two eyes, a nose, a mouth. You got a leg out here. Oh, there's legs. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's very clear yeah. on the backside, yeah. It's not the only animal out here. Look, I'm sitting on top of the head of another animal. Really? I got a nose and two eyes. Right. Behind me, there is like a kind of a snake kind of animal. Um, two eyes, nose, mouth. It's got his body a little bit shaped like a serpent around here. And then this thing, this is where you had a glyph. This is all very... The, the ruins are completely destroyed out here by this fungus, right? Yeah. And also the rock is very porous. So we're losing... I mean, it's incredible how fast we lose everything. So... By the 1920s, archaeology comes out here and does research and comes to the idea of ha that this is a fertility site. Then local people, local Indians out here, hear the name of fertility and start creating their own story. By the way, this is also an altar. You can see the altar collapsed in two. Um, so what did the story say? The story that local people started having was that pregnant Mayas would come out here they would sit right there. Yeah. That this is the gynecological chair, and they have one leg here, one leg there, and they will receive the baby out here. Okay. <laughs> so again, this is completely, completely bullshit. Absolutely not true. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you some Maya porn. So what's this? This is the face. Yes. Eyes, nose. Mouth. Actually, I have a picture from the 1920s. This is a smiling face. You have an ear. You have the other ear. He's got a kind of a head on. Actually, this is a cacao. And you can see the feathers, the plumes of a macaw, of a parrot sticking out. Yeah. You see an arm and a hand. You see the torso. The other arm is fell off, but you still see the hand out here. Yeah. And then you see a leg sticking up and a foot. The other leg disappeared, and here's the end of the foot. So what is this? This is a penis in erection. And especially erection is very important. First of all, one testicle. Oh other, yeah, here's other, a ball. The other testicle fell off. The shaft and the head. But to make sure that you can see that's a penis in erection, they also put the main vein on it. 
<laughs> to show that it's a penis in erection. So what we have out of here is a masturbating Maya. Okay then, that's not something I expected to hear this morning when I woke up. Well, I can't really show you anything else before my YouTube career is over. So let's continue the hike, shall we? I learned a lot of things other than my own fertility, if you can believe me. And that includes some interesting information about the history of the Mayan ruins that I explored in the past episode. Uh, the jungle in the back, you see right there in the back, they are part of the ruins protection area. But back in the days when the 19th century the explorer came, there were also ruins around here in this field. But the river ran through there and destroyed much of it until the protection began in the 20th century. So what they did was actually they re-diverted the river down here, even though most of the other ones were already destroyed. As we approached the village near the top of the hill, populated by the descendants of the Mayans, we ran into an old lady that was apparently a friend of Grado. Amor, ¿cuántos años tiene ahorita? ¿Cuántos años tiene? Como 79 años. Uh, 79. She, 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 she thinks she's got 79, right? She doesn't know. Tiene mucha fuerza en tu edad. She continued talking about various physical discomforts and a lot of the problems that is currently facing both her family as well as the entire village. And she eventually drew to a shocking yet not so surprising conclusion. No, oh. Wow. Now as we approach this old Mayan settlement of locals, which unfortunately were abandoned by the government. We have to mask up because uh, we don't even know that they will ever get their shots of vaccines. Can't believe, you know, just a few minutes walk outside Copanarinas where, you know, people can get champagne for $400, $1,500. Here are people living on $1 or maybe even less a day. Wow, I just left the village. The abject poverty, it is just heart-wrenching. I've been warned that I would be surrounded by all kinds of kids trying to sell me souvenirs because it might be their most lucrative ways of income. And yet, there were only two kids. They had school one day a week. The village has electricity, but nobody could afford it. There's no medical service. There's no store. There's nothing. And yet, because of a random virus that popped out of nowhere just a year and a half ago. Now I'm here talking about the consequences of the lack of tourism has been bringing little to no cash to this village literally across the world in the middle of the rural Honduran jungle. We continue walking downhill and ran into this tuk-tuk climbing up this steep hill despite all of the odds and got to a place where I have a little story to tell you. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a crazy story, okay? See these houses? This abandoned house used to be a barrack for the guards. Guards for what? Well, things stored inside these sheds. These sheds are just, you know, enhanced versions of those tobacco drying sheds that I've showed you before. Except, just about 15 years ago, a local drug lord called Mamalicha had began stashing cocaine inside. And what the peasants will do is actually they will be instructed to come here and pick up the goods. And then they will walk straight through the jungle into the other side in Guatemala. Just imagine, you know, in this very warehouse, it stores about, you know, 1% of the GDP of this entire country. No big deal. The end of Mamalicha, well, his reign ended a few years ago when he was waiting for a stoplight in La Entrata, about one hour away. He had his window up, he was smoking, probably, and uh, he was just waiting for the light to turn green, right? And the motorcycle came by, dropped a live grenade into his cabin, and boom! That was it. The end of uh, good old Mamalicha. And now this entire place is abandoned. And we kept going and going with my hands brushing against the verdant metal. This is the beauty of Honduras. Not like the magnificent ruins or the bustling cities. 90% of this country is just pure countryside tranquility. The sun itself was even falling asleep on this lazy afternoon. And there was no chaotic city traffic. There was no checking in and clocking out. There were no worries. There were no precautions. There was just inner peace in my mind and in Mother Nature. 
and as I was thoroughly enjoying this gorgeous countryside afternoon, my happy time was cut short as we ended up on the banks of a river. We had to cross because civilization and my dinner lies on the other side, and yet I did not see any bridge. So as I was busy looking around for a boat, Grado suddenly yelled at me from the middle of the river. Oh no! <laughs> okay, here I go. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Oh god, it's deep. Oh, it's muddy. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, oh my god. Ow, ow, my shoes got stuck. Okay, it's coming up. Oh my god. Oh, oh, it's freezing. It's freezing. Uh, do I need to use the mask later? Because it's coming up to my mask. No, no. It's fine. Okay, okay, okay. It's coming to my underwear. Okay, underwear. Bye bye, underwear. Oh no, oh god, oh it's cold, oh, 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 God help me, in my, in my, in my wallet, and, and basically anything I have, God, oh, 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 I heard there's fish here, why is nobody swimming into my trousers? Oh, the river's... Oh, it's fast. The river is fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Tomorrow is Sandals Day. That's for sure. And just as you think that this might be the highlight of this trip, well, prepare to be mistaken. Because as we were walking back towards the town, we heard something very familiar. Oh, there's Macaw. Yeah. Well, the ruins are right in front of us. Look, that's La Sepultura. That's the ruins. Ah, I see. These are ruins. This is a ruin. This is a big temple. <laughs> ah, this is a big temple. Wow, right the ah, these are wild, huh? Yeah. They're now in the sacred valley of the star and the star. They, are re they are reintroduced by the bird park. Yeah, uh, I saw the information today. So we got in the valley now around probably a hundred square Wow, I can't believe I'm seeing macaws here. Yesterday I was just walking down that way on the highway and now I'm just walking, you know, yeah. knee deep in grass, hearing the sound of macaws. Wow. And think about that, just a week ago, I was staying in my mom's basement trying to figure out, you know, if I should cook cup noodles or fried the noodles oh yeah they're flying they're flying and fly they did How is that even possible? Oh, you thought the adventure here in Copanunas is over? Well, didn't I tell you to remember those two girls? They invited me to visit their house that night. What did we do there? Well, you'll find out. Hola! 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 Ay, ¿quién eres? Ah, yo soy Osiris Casulda, mucho gusto. <laughs> ah, mucho gusto. Eh, ¿Y qué practicas? Practico budismo de tierra pura. Sí. Ah, porque fue lo que me trajo todas las respuestas que buscaba. Y porque creo que es la forma más amorosa de vivir con todo mundo. Claro. 
eh, encontré coherencia entre el amor que yo tenía por los animales y poder tener una fe que me permitiera vivir con esto. Eh, me gusta mucho poder cultivar amor a través del budismo. Eh, me gusta creer que cuando me vaya de este cuerpo físico voy a poder encontrarme con Buda y eso me llena de mucha alegría. And my night ended with prayers of blessing this family with their new move in this new house. Con el mérito y el amor del Buda Anida, tomó refugio en el Buda en el Dharma y la Asamblea Suprema hasta alcanzar la perfección. Lograré la iluminación para el And next morning, my local family brought me to a secret location here in Copanuenas a new tourist destination dedicated to one, two, three, Girasoles! <laughs> That's it for my adventures in Copanuenas. In the next part, I will document the five bus journey from Copanuenas all the way to Guatemala City, walk across the land border between Honduras and Guatemala, and meeting a hotel owner who paints himself onto the wall. Well, I hope you like this video, and if you do like it, please consider clicking the like button beneath me. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click the subscribe button to follow me on more adventure. And I'll see you in the next part, okay?